Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to part two of my updated D&D 5th edition uh, buyer's guide. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at accessories for the Dungeons & Dragons game. Uh, this is the second part, like I said, part one focused on the rule books, uh, so the core rule books and the rule supplement books. Uh, so this is going to focus on accessories and the third video in the series is going to be discussing uh, each of the adventures that have been released, sort of ranking them in my own personal preference. And uh, again, the sort of little mini reviews. Uh, now, each of the things I'm going to talk about here, I've done videos on in the past. So I'm not going to be opening or unboxing the items that you see uh, in these videos. If you want to look at the items in more uh, detail, then uh, you can certainly do that by checking the playlist that I will include at the end of this uh, at, at the end of this video. Uh, also, I'm only going to be talking about stuff that is what I consider to still be current or easily uh, available to the average consumer. So I'm not going to be looking at things that have been updated or out of print. Um, I'm not going to look at like older, like for example, some of the dice sets when I get into those. Uh, I'm not going to look at like a lot of the older ones. I'm just going to talk about the more recently available ones. And I also want to focus mainly on things that um, the majority of viewers will have um, the best chance of being able to actually go out and pick up. Um, not every town has a local game store or a hobby store. And I mean, I've lived in towns uh, for a significant period of time that lacked any sort of uh, like actual game store. So I want to focus on items that should be available through like major book retailers, uh, like Barnes and Noble in the United States or here in Canada, we have chapters. Um, so I wanted to limit it to things that I know I'd be able to go to my local chapters, uh, bookstore and have a reasonable chance of actually finding on their shelves. So uh, what we're gonna look at first is one of the most important accessories uh, for anyone getting into role-playing games, and that is going to be dice sets. Now, D&D uh, &D dice sets, they they have evolved over the last few years, which is great. Uh, so what they sort of have now are these sorts of like dice and miscellany sets. <laughs> so the first one we're looking at here is L'Oreal Silver Hands Explorer's Kit. This is sort of like your generic 5th edition D&D dice set. Um, it's not tied to a specific adventure, it's not tied to a specific book, it is just um, the a dice set for the Forgotten Realms campaign setting, which is the default setting for 5th edition D&D. It's sort of their primary focus of their adventures and the, the products that they release. Um, so these sets are really great um, because you get a full set of D&D dice, so you get your four six-sided dice, even though you don't actually really roll four six-sided dice anymore to determine your attributes like you used to, but they still include them, which is great. Uh, you get a D4, uh, two D10, uh, one is percentile, one is just for a regular one. Uh, you get a D8, a D12, and we get two D20s, uh, because you have advantage and disadvantage where you need to roll two 20-sided dice and take the better or worse result, depending on if it's advantage or disadvantage. Uh, so having two of these dice is great. You can just roll them both at the same time. Uh, this particular set has the larger oversized D20s, um, which I have to admit, I didn't think I was gonna like, but I really kind of love them now. Um, Wizards actually had sent me another dice set. Um, it wasn't a retail one. Um, but it, uh, it, it had the large D20s in there as well. So they're the ones that I use primarily, uh, when I game now. So I actually really kind of warmed up to those, uh, you know, oversized dice, uh, for the D20s. They're, they're kind of neat. And again, sort of a, uh, it's definitely subject to personal opinion and personal taste, but I kind of, I, I like them a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, what's also great about these sets is they come with a lot of extras. So the first thing is that the box they're inside of is actually a felt-lined dice tray that you can roll your dice into, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, if, you know, that way you don't have like the dice constantly clattering off the table. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a great inclusion to have instead of having like just a tin or in some cases just having, you know, like maybe a, a, a cloth dice bag included. So having the actual like dice rolling tray is really, really cool. Uh, it also comes with 20 double-sided cards, uh, which have, um, in this case here, for this one specifically, information on some key locations in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting, some key uh, NPCs, and uh, also has like a, uh, a double-sided map of the Sword Coast, 
uh, and the, the city of Waterdeep, which is again one of their uh, sort of go-to cities for adventures. Uh, so this is a great set, and uh, it's really you know definitely some decent uh, value for what you're uh, what you're paying for here. Um, so yeah, this is definitely worth checking out. The the retail prices on this set are $24.95 US or $33.95 Canadian. So uh, that is the generic one. So this is the one that, you know, you have a pretty decent chance of finding. However, when major adventures come out, like their major storylines, uh, Wizards do release um, specific sets of dice to go along with those. So this is the most recent one of those. We have the Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden Dice and Miscellany set. Again, it comes with all the same dice, the 46. Uh, the 2d20, although the, the d20s are back to your standard size, and they have the 20 number on them instead of the D&D like ampersand logo that the larger sets have. Uh, what's interesting about this particular set is the d10s, the 2d10s, are both your standard uh, d10s numbered like one, like zero through nine. Um, and uh, I think it's because you know there's not a lot of use for charts, uh, like percentile charts in the actual adventure, but there are situations where you would roll multiple d10s. So that's what we got there. But everything else is pretty much the same as well, including the uh, it comes with the dice tray, it comes with the uh, the the maps, it comes with the uh, the visual aids. Uh, again, just a fantastic set. Uh, this one was a little bit more. It was about five dollars more uh, on average, so twenty nine ninety nine uh, U.S. or thirty nine ninety nine Canadian. Uh, but again, there's a lot of great value in here. There's a lot of great extras, and uh, these are sets that I both highly recommend. So. Uh, definitely check those out, and um, they're a great way to sort of start your accessory collection. And uh, whoops, didn't mean to bump the camera there. And uh, they're just great to have in general because you know you need dice to play the game. All right, up next, uh, this is going to be the only third-party product I'm going to be discussing in this video. Uh, but Gale Force Nine puts out a series of game aid cards that you can use with the D and D game. So there's three different types that I want to talk about here. Uh, so the first one is sort of an equipment card set. I think this is the only one like this that's been released, but we have the magic item cards. Uh, then we have the monster cards. And then we also have um, the spell book cards. So um, these are sort of a mixed bag, uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the spell cards, um, so they have arcane, which covers your wizard, your sorcerer, and your warlock classes. Uh, then you have the class specific ones, so there'll be a set for the cleric, there'll be a set for the druid, there's a set for the bard, there's a set for paladins, there's a set for rangers, and then there's the Xanathar's Guide, uh, so that book had spells in it as well, so there is a set of cards for that. I assume we'll do the same thing with Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything as well. Um, so, and there is one also for like the racial traits, uh, some of the racial traits. Not all of them, but at least a decent amount of them. Um, so those are probably the ones that I recommend the most. Uh, the prices do vary, uh, so I'm not really going to get into uh, the pricing on, in, you know, for this particular product. Uh, but spell cards are just usually handy because it, it, it's great to just have the cards handy for the spells that you know or have memorized, rather than spending time uh, sort of rifling through the, uh, the rule book trying to find the specific spell that you need. And, uh, you know, it's definitely compounded if you don't track what source book your spells come from. So, for example, um, we had a, I had a situation with a player who uh, didn't know what one of his spells did, and um, we, he tried looking it up and he couldn't find it. And it's because it was from Xanathar's Guide and not the player's handbook, but he didn't indicate where, where he got the spell from. So we spent several minutes trying to find um, the spell that um, was in a book that he didn't actually have with him at the time. So anyway, um, just, you know, stuff like that can happen. So they're probably, like I said, these, the, the spell cards are the ones that I recommend the most out of the three different types that they have. The other two types, uh, they both suffer from sort of the same kind of issues, uh, one more so than the other. Uh, so we have the magic item cards, uh, so this one here. Uh, they list all the magic items from the Dungeon Master's Guide. I don't think they've done any ones for books that have come out since. Um, they might combine, like, with the Tasha's and Xanathar's books. They might combine them. I, I don't know. Uh, but the issue is, is that they are very much limited to the artwork that is actually in the book that the items are taken out of. So for the magic item card set here... It's from the Dungeon Master's Guide, and um, there's just, like, not everything 
had some artwork to go with it. So you just have a lot of cards that, you know, instead of having proper art, just have this generic placeholder symbol with like a spell book and crystals sort of laid across it in this wand. It's just, it's, it's just not what I would want to spend the, the amount of money that I spent on these uh, to not have the actual artwork. Like, so on the back here, uh, you can actually see an example of that. So horseshoes of the Zephyr, like that is not a horseshoe. That is just, you know, that's again, that generic placeholder image, um, which should have been my first red flag. I didn't really look at the back until after I already paid for it. So I guess that's sort of on me. Um, the problem is, is that, you know, again, they could have just gotten like just a generic image of horseshoes or like for some of the magical boots, they could have just had a picture of like boots, you know, they could have done something. Um, I don't know if it's a contractual thing, like if they were strictly limited to the art assets that were sent to them, but, um, it's just, I don't know, like this was uh, $40 Canadian, uh, and like $30 US, um, to, to pay for this. And to me, that's not a, ch a small amount of money to, to pay for something and then have a decent number of the cards just not have the artwork when the artwork is one of the key selling points of the, of the product. So I don't know. It's sort of, again, it's a mixed bag. It depends on what your, your preferences are. It depends on sort of what um, is a deal breaker for you or not. Um, if I were to go back, I would probably not uh, buy this set <laughs> again. Like if I could do it over again, I probably... I probably wouldn't have, um, but again, it's up to you what you're looking for. Um, so we got the magic item cards and then we have the monster cards. So this is again, another really major source of sort of disappointment and frustration. And uh, these, the monster card sets is actually the straw that sort of broke the camel's back, uh, figuratively speaking, um, because their, their decisions then um, how they decided to do these is what stopped me buying the card sets altogether. Um, so what we have is for the monster manual alone, there are three different sets of cards you have to get. Um, so the first one here is the one of the three is the one I would recommend the most. Um, it is the challenge zero through five. There's a lot of monsters in here and uh, in my experiences, lower level, you know, groups, uh, games, um, you, you tend to run more lower level stuff than getting into like high level games at least. Um, for, for, for me, like tier one or tier two, um, uh, adventures league stuff were the most common. So you might get a lot of use out of these. Um, but the, you have the zero through five, then there was like six through 14 was the challenge rating of the next set of cards. Uh, and then for anything above challenge rating 14 or for certain monsters that had a challenge rating between six and 14 that they didn't include in the six through 14 set, uh, you had to buy the Epic Monster uh, stat cards, which were, uh, again, more expensive than the other sets. And there were less cards, but they were bigger. So I guess that's better. Um, and there's just size inconsistency. So you've got some of the cards in here that are the standard size of like a regular playing card. Uh, but then you also have other ones that are like two playing cards, uh, sort of like side by side. And that's the size of the card. So it's, I don't know, it's a bit frustrating. Um, and the other issue is that, again, not every creature has artwork. Um, for the ones that are taken from the Monster Manual, it's usually not that bad. Um, I don't think there were, at least in the two sets that I have, I don't think that were any that actually lacked some sort of proper art. But when you get books or the, the card sets for things like um, Vo's Guide to Monsters or Mordekane's Tome of Foes, there's a fair number of cards um, that don't have any art at all. Um, so there might be like a particular type of orc that might have like class levels or a class theme sort of applied to it that they don't have any artwork for. So instead of showing even an orc, it just has this like generic um, logo in the center of the art side of the card. So again, very much a mixed bag. Um, inconsistencies in the card sizes are kind of annoying. Um, the way that they split up the monster manual cards are frustrating because um, my favorite monster is the Beholder. And the Beholder is within the challenge rating 6 through 14 card set. Like, you should have been in that one. But because they have layer actions um, and some other things, they just, they, the card size wasn't big enough to fit in the 6 through 14 set. So they just didn't include it at all. And you had to buy this, like, other 45 or, you know, 40 $45 set of cards um, to get it. So that's why I don't have that set. I still don't have that set. 
And uh, like I said, it was kind of uh, what killed my interest in these types of products, unfortunately. But they are out there, and what you're looking for from these cards may be different from what I'm looking for. Uh, so I just wanted to throw those out there as well. So those are things that are available as well. All right, um, moving on, we are going to talk about some items that you can use for using miniatures at your tabletop for representation of combat. Um, now, I'm not going to talk about minis themselves, um, although, again, though, because those are all third party at this point, and again, if you don't have a local game store or hobby store, they're much more difficult to come by without ordering online. So, I just want to talk about the surfaces that you put the minis on in this particular video. I've already done videos in the past discussing, um, you know, ways or options to get like miniatures or to build a miniature collection. So I'm not going to rehash that here. Uh, but the first thing that they put out were a series of reprinted tile sets from like the, the days of third edition and uh, fourth edition D&D. And so we got three different sets here. So we've got uh, the dungeon tiles reincarnated. We have the, uh, the, the wilderness. We have the city sets, and then we have the dungeon sets. So these are sheets of like tiles of various sizes, um, from like six by six to maybe a little bit bigger than that, all the way down to like a one inch square piece. Um, these are, they're, they're interesting. <laughs> um, I will be honest, like these came out in like 2017, I think, or 2016, 2017. So these came out like January 2017, and uh, I've only used stuff out of one of these sets um, for actual gameplay once, maybe twice, maybe twice, but um, not very often. Um, the issue is, is that um, you have to sort of be wary of uh, what tiles you have available when you're designing your dungeon locations. Um, so that could be sort of a bit of a hang up. Um, the other thing is that they are, again, just some, some of them are pretty small tiles and you have to try to fit them all together, but they don't have pieces that like interlock with one another. They're just squares. They're perfectly squares. So they are prone to sliding around or sort of separating quite a bit. And if you're placing a tile on top of a tile, um, it's again, can be a little bit difficult. Um, they do have sort of a, a textured surface, if I recall correctly. I'm, I hope I'm not confusing that with the fourth edition ones, but they do have a little bit of a textured surface that might help uh, with enough friction to keep them from sliding apart too, too much. Um, but again, it's something that uh, honestly, I just really haven't uh, haven't used much of. Uh, but again, um, for other people, they may prefer having the tiles. They may prefer like, you know, basically like creating a puzzle and, and putting the pieces to, to sort of all together. And you can get like these little like rubber mats from dollar stores that uh, you can put the tiles on top of and uh, they will stay pretty, you know, pretty firm, pretty flat. Um, the tiles are also, um, they are double sided. So you, there is again a little bit of variety there, which is great. Um, so this is something that you may want to consider, um, but from personal experience, uh, these boxes have gone pretty much largely untouched since about halfway through the year uh, 2017. So, um, you know, take that for what you will, uh, but they are out there. Uh, these retail for $24.99 US or $33.99 Canadian, so uh, $25 to $34. Um, they, and I do still see these at local, at uh, like bookstores and local game stores. So you should still be able to get these if you are looking for uh, the tiles. But like I said, I haven't used these in years. So what I have been using is actually the D&D Adventure Grid. Uh, so this came out in 2017, uh, the same year actually as the tile sets, but it came out a few months later. Um, this has been surprisingly, um, surprisingly great. Um, so this is just a generic grid. Uh, so you got one side that's wilderness themed, the other side is dungeon themed. And uh, there's nothing, there's no features on them. They're just sort of a blank grid that you can use. But um, it's, so yeah, it's, it's, I, I've been using this a lot. <laughs> so this is what I was using regularly for every uh, D&D game or every uh, RPG that I was running, fantasy RPG that I was running uh, for the better part of three years up until the pandemic hit. Uh, this does retail for $24.95 US or $33.95 Canadian. Uh, but 
yeah, it's it's been really great. You can use wet erase or dry erase markers on it. Um, I had my concerns about this when I first got it, and uh, I've heard some some mixed things from other people that have purchased the same product. Uh, so what this is is it feels like almost like a like a board game board. It's that kind of material, like that kind of cardstock, um, with the the grid sort of just you know, like glued onto on on like the surface of it. Um, but to have it fold up the way that it does, um, there is a slit two thirds of the way down the grid, meaning that what's connecting the, the, the whole thing together is one third of the total like length of, of the grid. So that for me was a concern because it felt like it was a built in failure point. And I have heard people say that when they got theirs, um, the first time they folded it out or one of the times they picked it up to flip it over, the whole thing just ripped apart. Um, now, I haven't had that happen. Mine is still perfectly intact. And uh, while I, you know, generally speaking, I'm very careful with how I handle things like this, there were a few times where I would just sort of pick the whole thing up by one end and, and flip it over. So it's actually held up really, really well, um, like more better than I thought it was going to. Uh, and like I said, it got some pretty heavy use. Um, so this is something that I actually do highly recommend. And um, like I said, I can vouch for, at least in my experiences, that it's the durability is better than I thought it was going to be, but others have had different experiences. So something to keep in mind as well. Um, I've actually had like some people say that when they bought theirs, they purposefully just took like an X-Acto knife or a razor knife and, and cut the, you know, down the middle of the, the, the third that's connecting it and just have it as two strips that they would just set next to each other. Um, so, you know, it, however you want to handle it is fine, um, but like I said, I've, I've gotten quite a bit of use out of it, and it's actually held up really well, so um, I'm really pleased with that. And another product that I really enjoy, although um, you can't use wet erase or dry erase markers on it, um, you can't use, I, I wouldn't recommend using the dry erase or wet erase markers on the, the reincarnated tile sets either. Um, just because they're, like I said, they're not really designed for that. Uh, this product you don't want to use markers on either. But these are the tactical maps reincarnated. So what this is, is sort of a best of, of some of the maps that have been included in adventures or other map packs in, in D&D's past, primarily like 3rd edition, 3.5, and 4th edition. Uh, but there's a lot of great stuff in here. You get 10 double-sided maps, so you get 20 maps total. They are put, uh, done with the one in square grid on them, which is great. On the inside, you have this folder that has um, just some references for like sizes on the grid, uh, templates for like, uh, you know, spheres, cones, uh, cover, areas of effect, line of sight. So there's some decent information built into that uh, just to have, which they didn't need to include, but they did and it's great. And yeah, you get 20 maps that you can use to gain inspiration from. And that's what I love about these types of maps is that you can just sort of look at them and um, you look at like the design of like a dungeon location or like a, a farm, maybe that's been uh, overrun or something like that. And then you can just sort of come up with scenarios, adventure ideas, or concepts. So I really like these types of things, and I would love to see another of these sets come out, hopefully at some point in the near future. Uh, the retail price for this, $24.95 US, $33.95 Canadian. Again, these are just thin paper maps. You cannot use wet erase or dry erase markers on them. Um, so if you want to customize them, it is a permanent thing. <laughs> You're kind of stuck with it at that point. Um, but there's, again, a lot of great maps in here, and uh, 20 maps for you know for that price is is you know again it's a it's a pretty good deal and you can get hours and hours of gameplay um just out of using those maps so for me they're they're definitely well worth it all right so the final things that i want to discuss in this video are going to be dungeon master screens now again there are third-party companies like gale force 9 the company that did the uh, the card sets that i talked about They've done a bunch of screens for specific adventures or some of the campaign setting books, but I'm not going to be talking about those ones because, again, I've never seen any of those outside of a local game store. And for the purposes of making this video try to be useful to as many people as possible, I want to focus on the things that are more uh, widely available through major book retailers. Um, because, like I said, not every town, unfortunately, has a local game store. And, uh, like, I, I've lived years without a local game store, so I know how rough it can be to sort of get some of these things. So I want to focus on the things that the majority of people should be able to, to go and get. Uh, so the first screen that I want to talk about, and I'm not going to show the panels or anything in this video. I've done reviews on them in the past. If you want to check out the playlist at the end, 
Uh, you know, they should be in there somewhere. But the first screen is the Dungeon Master screen reincarnated. Um, there was a DM screen that came out in January of 2015. Uh, this one came out in 2017, I believe. Uh, 20, yeah, so 20, this one came out in 2017, so it replaced that one. Uh, and I haven't seen the original DM screen um, in game stores or bookstores even for at least like a year to a year and a half now. Uh, but this is, you know, your classic DM screen. Uh, it's got a lot of great information on the inside. It's got your conditions. It has stuff like encounter distance and lighting sources. And there's just a lot of useful stuff on uh, the inside of the screen. So definitely worth uh, getting into. I like to have screens because um, I typically run games in public. And um, I have one player in particular who was pretty notorious for trying to look over and uh, see my notes, um, see my, like things like monster hit points, watch my dice roll, so I like to have screens uh, for that purpose. Um, this retails for $14.95 US or $19.95 Canadian, and uh, this is just the screen, so that's all that you get with it, but it is a useful screen, and it was one that I used quite a bit uh, up until, again, uh, the pandemic hit and I wasn't able to run games at my local game store anymore. Uh, so that's sort of your generic screen. However, uh, just this year, Wizards of the Coast released their first um, environmental-themed, I guess you could say, uh, Dungeon Master screen. So we had the Dungeon Master screen Wilderness Kit come out. Uh, so this is, is sort of an evolution of their DM screen product, and probably, again, an indication of how these screens, if they produce more, are going to be done going forward. And they're very much in line with what we had with the dice sets, in that it comes with a great amount of extras. Uh, so this is a little bit more expensive. So it's $24.99 or $33.99 Canadian. Uh, so it is, it is you know, a good bit of a jump up. It is also three years later. So, you know, there is stuff like inflation, unfortunately, that can affect uh, the prices as well. But in addition to the screen, which is an awesome screen, by the way, uh, again, there was a recent review video for that if you want to check it out. Um, it comes with five dry erase sheets that you can use. Uh, a couple of them are uh, hex, like, just blank hex grids. If you were running like wilderness exploration adventures like Tomb of Annihilation or something going like old school like the uh, Isle of Dread, for example, hex crawling was a major part of that. So um, having a blank hex grid to use and fill out as you explore, you know, the region is awesome. Uh, and there's like two of those that are like double sided. And then there's another one that has like rules reference stuff on one side, but it blanked on the other. So you can have multiple players uh, tracking their own uh, their own uh, hex maps, for example, which is pretty cool. Uh, you also have a tracker for food and water sources. Again, rules reference uh, information, including wilderness chases, which is something that I haven't really ever done, but might be inclined to now that I have the screen. Uh, wilderness journeys and like your actions in combat. There are 27 cards that you can use for conditions, initiative tracking, or in certain environmental effects like heat or, uh, or cold uh, exposure. And it also comes with a box that you can fold up to store all the cards into. So again, pretty decent product. Uh, this one, like I said, is themed specifically for wilderness types of adventures or scenarios. I'm sure that it's a more generic one will probably come in the future, or you might have one for other types of things like maybe like Underdark Exploration or something along those lines. Uh, but it's just, again, a really, really nice product. And it's nice to see a standard accessory like a DM screen uh, come with extras, like just some other things to justify um, the amount of money that you're spending on it. And it does a great job of that, uh, in my opinion. So uh, even though it's not quite as generic as the, the reincarnated screen, this is one that is definitely worth getting, especially if you are big into running like wilderness-based uh, adventures, campaigns, uh, or you're running something like Tomb of Annihilation, for example, which does use a lot of wilderness exploration stuff in it. So there we go. That was sort of my look at some of the accessories that you can get for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Again, I wanted to focus primarily on stuff that is current or stuff that you should be able to easily acquire from um, like large retail books chains uh, or for people, again, that just don't have a local game store in their area to be able to still be able to go and get um, the vast majority of the products that I talk about here today. So that was my goal with this video. And again, I wanted to focus on more currently available items. Uh, so things that have had uh, like you know, updates or changes or had other things come out to replace them. 
Again, I probably, you know, I just didn't want to include in this video like the older dice sets or the original DM screen. I could always do uh, like a history of, um, so show, like show the evolution of the accessory. But for now, I wanted to focus on just the things that you have a reasonable chance of being able to go out today and get from uh, a books to a major book retailer, or if you're lucky enough to have one, and hopefully you do, uh, a local game store in the area. So if there's any major category of accessory that I've missed, uh, please let me know. Again, I did include miniatures purposefully just because um, you're usually only getting those from uh, game stores or hobby stores. And uh, I wanted to, again, focus on that wider range of, uh, of people. If you live in a town that doesn't have those stores available, I didn't want to sort of alienate you. But uh, I've, I have done videos talking about miniatures in the past and how to get them and sort of the different uh, ways to acquire them through like unpainted or blind boxes, um, you know, or like pawn sets. So there's stuff like that that I've had on this channel before as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, but anyway, I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful, um, give you some idea of what's out there, if nothing else, and uh, share my thoughts as best I can on some of the items that have been available. Um, like I said, just because I have them doesn't mean that I've been using them or that I highly recommend them. But the, there are things, again, like I said, that I do really enjoy and have gotten quite a bit of use out of. So I hope that this video helped with that as well if you were considering some of those items. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. If you've been using any of these items that I've talked about in your campaigns, let me know. Especially if you've gotten better use or more uh, consistent use out of your tile sets than, than I have. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, your feedback on that. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate the support, and I will see you next time. Take care.